At least seven people have been killed and others injured after a man opened fire at a Jehovah Witness event in Hamburg on Thursday evening. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky condemns Russian missile strikes on Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. China's President Xi Jinping begins an unprecedented third term in office after a unilateral vote at the National People's Congress. Protesters in Tbilisi take to the streets for the third day in a row, despite securing major concessions from the government over the controversial foreign agents bill. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney unveils plans to crack down on people smugglers with penalties of up to 30 years in prison. The European Commission proposes extending voluntary gas consumption reductions for member states to plan for next winter. One of Europe's largest consumer organizations calls for a ban on food and drink labels that claim to be CO2 neutral. At least seven people have been killed and others injured after a shooting in Hamburg on Thursday evening. Police were alerted to gunshots being fired at around 9.15 p.m. The incident happened during an event at a three-story building used by Jehovah Witnesses. Die Polizeibeamten, die dort reingegangen sind, haben dann auch Personen aufgefunden, die ähm, möglicherweise durch Schusswaffe schwer verletzt und teilweise auch tödlich verletzt worden sind. Ähm, die Beamten haben selber auch noch einen Schuss gehört aus dem oberen Teil des Objektes, sind nach oben gegangen, auch noch dort eine Person an aufgefunden. Police say they didn't have to use their firearms and believe that one of the dead could be the perpetrator. Officers also said that there was no indication that anyone was on the run. So far, there has been no immediate information on the motive behind the attack. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has condemned Russia's attacks on his country's power grid and has made it clear that Ukraine will not be in chains. These comments come after a series of deadly Russian missile strikes triggered a wave of electrical cuts, including at the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia. It's a critical situation. And Russia is aware of the creation of such a situation on our atom objects. It's just a decision. It means that Russia cannot be a sovereign part of the atomic relations in the atom sphere. And what is the most important Russian atom gas? опиниться під санкціями, тим безпечніше буде світу. Не можна залишити державі терористу жодної можливості використовувати будь-які атомні об'єкти будь-де у світі для терору. The EU's foreign policy chief Josep Borrell said the attack at Zaporizhia is a serious breach of nuclear safety. Zaporizhia is the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, the biggest in Europe. And Russia is putting in danger the entirety of our joint European continent, Russia included. Despite Russia redoubling their offensive, the Ukrainian government continues to send military reinforcement to Bakhmut, vowing not to let it fall. China's President Xi Jinping has been sworn in for an unprecedented third term in power. With one fist raised and the other hand on the Chinese constitution, Xi promised to, quote, strive hard for the construction of a modern and powerful socialist country. Xi, who is 69, culminates on a rise that has made him the most powerful and long-lasting leader of the Asian giant in several generations. The vote was 2,952 to zero by the National People's Congress, members of which are appointed by China's ruling party. The president was also unanimously named commander of the two million member People's Liberation Army. Protesters in Tbilisi rallied for the third day in a row on Thursday evening, despite securing major concessions from the government. The Interior Ministry promised to release all those detained during the demonstrations 
and the ruling party agreed to withdraw its controversial foreign agents bill. Georgia's president spoke out in support of the protesters and said distrust of the government was natural. The president previously promised to veto a bill that introduces a foreign agents label for NGOs and media organizations who receive money from abroad. Protest leaders say the rallies will continue until the bill is totally abandoned, while some are also calling for the government to resign. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney says her cabinet wants to establish a new law that would punish people smuggling by up to 30 years in prison. Maloney made the announcement in the town of Cutro near the beach where a migrant boat sank last month killing at least 72 people. E io penso che il modo migliore per uh, onorare queste vittime sia fare quello che si può fare perché queste tragedie non abbiano a ripetersi. Allora noi abbiamo um, licenziato in questo Consiglio dei Ministri un decreto legge che affronta questa materia e lo abbiamo fatto per ribadire che noi siamo determinati a sconfiggere la tratta di esseri umani responsabile di questa tragedia. On Sunday local residents held a procession in honor of those who died, many of whom had fled Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran and Syria, hoping to join family members in Europe. The cabinet decree must be passed into law by parliament where Maloney's right-wing coalition holds a comfortable majority. Do the UK's plans to crack down on illegal immigration comply with international law? That's the key question for the EU, after the UN Refugee Agency said London's proposal to reject asylum seekers who enter the country illegally would clearly breach international law. The EU's Home Affairs Commissioner echoed these concerns after speaking with her British counterpart, Suella Braverman. My immediate reaction uh, is I question whether this is in line with international obligations. She promised me it is, so let's hope she's right, but we have to examine it a little bit further. France, which works closely with the UK on the issue, is also wary of the proposal. Il ne faut pas qu'il y ait de conséquences euh, négatives sur notre relation bilatérale, mais je suis sûr que, de façon très constructive, nous saurons euh, trouver les, moies, les voies et les moyens de, de la conséquence de leur législation. But the British plan has found some sympathy in Austria. The discussion in Großbritannia zeigt ja, dass hier der Druck auf Europa immer stärker wird, was illegale Migration betrifft, was Asylmissbrauch betrifft. Wir müssen uns in Europa auf unsere Themen kontrollieren, äh, konzentrieren. In recent years, thousands of people have crossed the English Channel from France in often extremely small and dangerous boats, seeking a new life in Britain. The Conservative government has long promised to tackle illegal arrivals and is under growing domestic pressure to act. It's likely that Europe will have enough gas to make it through this winter, but the next one is more uncertain due to continuing supply problems. As a result, the EU will propose extending a 15% voluntary gas consumption reduction that member states agreed last year, as well as merging Ukraine into Europe's energy market. We have integrated Ukraine in the gas joint purchasing platform with a view to help secure 2 billion cubic meters of additional gas. And we are working on market reforms in the context of the accession process. Because the Energy Commissioner also denounced Russia's occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Director of the International Energy Agency has asked Europe to reflect on its dependence on Russian gas. This is a huge strategic mistake and many of us are paying it, not only with the electricity and gas bills, but much beyond that. He also warned MEPs that whatever happens in Ukraine, energy will never again be as cheap as it was before the war. 
As a result, European industry may be at a disadvantage in the global marketplace. Food and drink producers are greenwashing their products by classifying them as CO2 neutral and must be banned. That's according to one of Europe's leading consumer NGOs. The European Consumer Organization says that small greenwashing labels are becoming increasingly common on the shelves of supermarkets, as more and more brands are discreetly stating that the product on sale is climate neutral and therefore good for the planet. For us, this is absolutely greenwashing. Having 100% CO2 neutral uh, on a product is uh, scientifically inaccurate and misleading to consumers. There's no way for consumers in the supermarket to verify that this is uh, be using uh, carbon sequestration uh, projects to justify this claim. The NGO also says that the justification used by food companies to claim products as CO2 neutral is not valid and that they're using so-called carbon offsetting. I'm sure companies will pay um, for a carbon credit to balance out their own carbon emissions. The problem with this is that these uh, it's kind of a, a burn now, pay later approach. So they are emitting uh, carbon right now and then the pledges are for uh, tree planting projects mostly um, in the future. As a result, this compensation can take years to really be effective and isn't even guaranteed. Fires and extreme weather events could also cause these compensatory trees to disappear. For the European Consumer Organization, these labels are a misleading indication that have a marketing value which companies play on. It says that more than half of European consumers believe that environmental issues influence their own food choices. It's why they're calling for a ban on these type of labels.